Hi, I'm Chris from Pro-Am Racing. In this segment, we're going to talk about proper setup and component selection for forced induction. The Pro-Am EFI processor comes with the tune pre-installed right out of the box. All that's required is that you enter the basic parameters in the tune correctly for the combination of parts you're using. Let's get to it. As with any application, you need to make sure you're using fuel injectors that flow enough fuel to support your engine's flywheel horsepower rating. The fuel injector sizing page on the Pro-Am website will help you choose the right injectors if you're unsure what you need. Next, you need to enter the fuel injector's high and low flow rate values into the tune. The high flow rate will be the injector's actual flow rating. If using our fuel injectors, the low flow rate is roughly flow rate times 1.25. For example, if you are using 36 pound per hour injectors, 36 would be your high flow rate value and 45 would be your low flow rate value. Injector high and low slope rates are typically available from the manufacturer and should be calculated at a fuel pressure of 39 to 40 PSI, not 43.5 PSI as they are often rated. If the flow data is only available at 43.5 PSI, then divide the high and low flow ratings by 1.054. This will give you the flow ratings you need. If the low flow rate is not available, figuring it out is pretty easy to do with our software. Injectors tend to vary a bit at lower flow rates anyway, so if you don't have the low slope value, just multiply the advertised flow rate by 1.15. This will give you a starting point. You should then adjust the low flow rate as we discussed in the installation video. Select a mass air meter that will flow enough air and has enough range to support the needed airflow. If you're unsure which mass air meter will work best for your application, give us a call at Pro-M and we'll be happy to assist you. Now let's look at the mass air transfer function. This is listed as MAF transfer in the tune. It's a simple table with voltage values in the left column and air mass values in the right column. Note that this table, as well as any other one, can be viewed in either English or metric by clicking on the English metric button at the top of the screen. The reason I mention this is because the default setting when you open the tuning software is English. However, the transfer function you receive with your mass air meter will most likely be in metric units. Just click on the button if you want to enter the tune in metric units. Also notice that the unit of measure for the air mass values is either pounds per hour or kilograms per hour. Make sure that the units you are entering match what the software is asking for. For instance, if you are provided with air mass units in pounds per minute, you'll need to multiply those values by 60 in order to get values in pounds per hour. Also notice that all the values are in ascending order. This is the case with all the tables in the software. They must be entered this way. It is critical that the mass air transfer function you are entering be accurate. If the meter is a Pro-M, then the provided transfer function is accurate. If it's not a Pro-M, you are likely not provided with a transfer function at all. If you were, the data provided is likely inaccurate. If the meter is not a Pro-M, it can be sent in to Pro-M to have an accurate transfer function generated on our flow bench. You may be asked to ship the meter with whatever will be attached to its inlet when it's installed in the car. This is especially important if the meter will be used in a blow-through application. Call before you ship if you're unsure what to do. Make sure your fuel supply system will support the fuel demand of your engine. If you're working on a Fox Body Mustang, keep in mind that the stock fuel pump wiring will not support the current demand of a large external pump. Fuel pump wiring kits for these cars are available from Pro-M. If you're using an internal fuel pump, the factory wiring will be fine. I'd highly suggest that you watch the proper fuel system design video on our website. This is very important. An improperly designed fuel system will at least cause poor drivability and at worst, cost you an engine. If using a capacitive discharge ignition box to boost spark power, be sure to set the dwell mode to battery voltage function. Do not use a CD box unless it is necessary. Naturally aspirated engines and low boost applications will have no need for a CD box. If you decide to use a CD box, keep in mind that the only thing we're looking to accomplish is increase spark power. Buy one with a minimum of features, since things like spark retard will be controlled by the engine management system. Be sure to disable any features the CD box may have. The fuel table, base lambda, is based on load. You'll notice that the values go up to 1.9. What this means is that we can use the same table for both naturally aspirated and forced induction. A naturally aspirated engine typically will never achieve a load value over 0.85 and therefore will never use the values over 0.85 in the load table. 
The values higher than 0.85, therefore, are for forced induction only and are set accordingly. The values provided in this table should work well for most any engine combination, whether it is naturally aspirated or using forced induction. The base spark table, DBL spark, is also based on load, and the load values go up to 2. What this means is, just like the fuel table, we can use this spark table for both naturally aspirated and forced induction. Again, a naturally aspirated engine typically will never achieve a load value over about 0.85, and therefore will never use the values over 0.85 load in the table. Only forced induced engines will achieve load values that are higher. The values entered in this table will be good for most any naturally aspirated engine. Values that are in load columns higher than 0.85 are for forced induction, and these values should be very good as is. But be aware that there are an awful lot of factors that contribute to calculating the absolute optimum spark advance needed for forced induction. This subject could fill a book by itself. The absolute correct values can only be achieved on a dyno by a skilled tuner. That said, the values that are already here should be quite good and likely can be left alone. Although tuning spark advance for boost using the DBL spark table is the preferred method, we do offer another, more simplistic method. You can remove timing as a simple function of boost pressure using a 3-bar map sensor. There is a table in the tuning software called Boost Spark Retard. It's a two-column table with RPM on the left and degrees of timing retard on the right. The numbers in the right column represent how many degrees of timing will be removed from the final advance calculated by the processor for each pound of boost at the indicated RPM. The three-bar map sensors are available from ProM. To use this feature, simply install the three-bar map sensor and enable the sensor in the tune. Installation is simple. Just mount the sensor, plug it into the supplied wiring connector in your harness, and connect a vacuum hose from the sensor to a proper source of manifold vacuum. Vacuum hose configuration is covered in the installation video. To enable the sensor, go to the map sensor parameters in your tune. You'll find that all of the parameters are preset except for the following. Set map HP to map present. Set map RC enable to enable. Set the parameters for each of the three map trouble codes as follows. Lamp enable is yes. Mill type is pending. Clear count should be 50. And pending count is three. Keep in mind that the amount of advance removed using the Boost Spark Retard table will be removed from the final advance calculated by the tune and that the DBL Spark table already removes timing under boost based on load. If you intend to use the Boost Spark Retard table exclusively, you want to modify the DBL Spark table to resemble one for a naturally aspirated engine. This is easy to do. Simply copy the values in the row for load 0.85 and paste them all into the rows for loads over 0.85. Another feature you can potentially take advantage of is the ACT spark trend table. The air charge temperature sensor is in the intake manifold and therefore represents the actual temperature of the air after the supercharger. Large amounts of boost may heat the air to a degree that requires pulling timing. You'll find that this table is already being used as a safety net, but the values in the table can be changed if needed to suit your needs. Use Innovate MTXL Wideband O2 sensors to control closed loop. These are available from ProM. They're fairly inexpensive and they're a very good product. Spend the money and do it right. Setting up the parameters in the MTXL controllers is covered in the installation video and in the installation instructions. Please refer to these for proper setup. If you're using a supercharger, you'll want to adjust the IAC duty cycle table to compensate for the extra drag on the engine created by the supercharger. This is not necessary with a turbocharger. Use the settings shown. Remember that any time you make a change, you should save the tune under a different name and leave the old tune untouched. That way you can always go back to the old one if you have a problem. Also remember that the tune is not actually in the processor until you write it to the processor. Also, if you're using a PCV valve, and you should be, boost pressure will flow through the PCV hose and the valve and into the crankcase. Problems are obvious. Loss of boost pressure, metered air that never enters the combustion chambers, and pressurizing the crankcase, which will result in oil blowing out through the valve cover vent, which at least makes a mess and at most could cause a fire. The solution is a good quality check valve in the PCV hose. This is covered in detail in the installation video. 
be sure to go back and watch that video again. This is very important. That's it for the segment on forced induction. Please be sure to check out our website at proamracing.com for more helpful videos. Until next time, I'm Chris Richards for Pro Am Racing. Thank you.